got the input tire slash natural. Yeah. 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 Morning, lads. Um, first of all, I'll explain the uh, payout. We're paying top four, ten pound all in, and we're paying a five pound suit of pool, which is optional. Paying the first two. Right, first of all, I'd like to take your money. Yeah. Team money's all been sorted. It's all our team money and suit and pool. Right. pool. Lovely. I'd like Peter to draw. Even, go on, Pete. Oh, Pete. You go, Sam. Get the even one, Pete. Evens. Oh, yeah. Evens. Oh, yeah. Right. Get your envelope. Here's your envelope. Also, Lovely. while I, we're talking, to explain the pegging, peg one is at the white boat on the far bank. Yeah. All right. And then so on around the bends up to the end peg. Right. Okay, lads. So let's right get fishing. Right. And may the best time. Have a good day. Best team yeah. win. Cheers. <laughs> Right, the main thing is to get yourself nice and comfortable. As you see, I've got adjustable legs and I've set them there and I've just adjusted these to make the box nice and sturdy. So that when I sit on it, I can sit nice and comfortable and I can stand up and there's no worry of falling in or, or the box slipping from side to side. So that's one of the things I like to do, get myself really comfortable. Next thing I like to do, is to get me keep net in place. Now, at the moment they're doing all these sort of mod cons and everything to make life a lot easier for you when you're actually on the canal banks. A lot of the time you, um, you intend to have concrete banks and you can't get your bank sticks in so now they come up with all these detachments and everything which I'll show you how it works if I screw that into my net screw that round and then another little trick when you're fishing canals is to always put your bottom of your keep net round there like that so that as you get boats go by it doesn't go up and down in your swim making a fair bit of disturbance especially when you're fishing close in, and that just fits neatly on the arm, on the arm. Down like that. Tighten it up. And that's nice and, nice and safe and just where I want it. And I haven't got to worry about um, it falling in or a boat going by pulling it in. It's another handy little gadget. Right, I'm just about to knock up some uh, some punch crumb. The idea is to wet it through and get it to the right consistency. At the moment, that's still a bit too dry. What we do is I knock this up and I leave it a minute or two, and it'll dry out again. And then I'll, I'll wet it through again. And then what we'll do is we'll run it through the sieve 
to get rid of all the unwanted lumps. <laughs> right, now we're going to leave that just for a minute, because that will dry off again. If I sip it through now, what will happen is it'll be too dry to use for the start. So we'll leave that for about a minute or so, and then we'll wet it down again. And then I'll run it through the sieve, as I say, and get rid of all the unwanted un 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 lumps, and then basically we're ready to go. If you see the size of me landing net, it's more, <laughs> it's more in the carp sort of range. Um, it's very big, but it's amazing how many times on these canals you do actually hook a big carp. And I've had the mickey taken out of me quite a few times, but also I've had a lot of people ask me to borrow it when they've been lucky enough to hook a carp. Plus the fact, when you get to my age, you need something with a nice big net so you don't miss it. Right, I've left that for five minutes, and as you can see, it's a lot drier now. What we'll do is wet it up just a slightly bit more, just to get that nice, that nice consistency back. And, then we'll, and that's perfect. And what we'll do now is we'll sieve it to get rid of all the unwanted lumps. This is a rather unusual pole cup. It's one that's, um, it's not in the shops. You can't buy them in the shops. You have to make them yourself, but um, very effect effective. What I'll do, I'll show you how this works roughly now, right in the edge where I won't do any damage to anything. What it is, as you can see, it's, it's, it's dangling. And the reason you have it like that is that you can shake it without knocking any bait out of it and it's on two sliding swivels. I'll show you what happens. I'll sort some bait out quick and put it in the edge. I'll get out some squats. I'll put a few squats in it, like that. The main trouble is when people pass the pole through, they're liable to turn the pot and it, the bait comes out. But as you can see, you can shake this about like this and no bait comes out. And if I drop it right down the edge, we don't want to get accused of cheating, you'll see that it turns upside down and then you just lift it out like that. And I found that to be one of the best cups that, that you can get hold of at the moment. I don't think it'll be long before someone fetches them out on the market, but you can do the same with ground bait as well. I'll just show you the same with ground bait. We won't wet it, we've just at the moment, a lot of the odd best ideas to put the ground bait in just, just reasonably dry, but it's the same with this, you just shake it around a little bit. It doesn't never come out. And if you drop it in the edge, you'll see again it turns itself upside down and the swivels that were on it drops it. And everything comes out on top. So um, I'm very, very proud of that cup. <laughs> I think that would not be quiet because that all that would do is fill the fish up. They're feeding that so quick, go through that and then disappear. That would not be quiet. And that is finished, and that punch crumb is now ready to use. It's perfect. I'm not going to use a great deal of ground bait today, but at the moment, the fish seem to be responding to ground bait, especially on canals. So I'm just going to mix a little bit up, just enough to put some in at the start. Put them out of the way. What I'm going to use is a little bit of super lake. Not a great deal. And a little bit of surface cloud. Put them in like that. And just get a little drop of water. Just put a little, just right be a second. Just going to put a little bit of a tractor, just a little bit on the ends, just to get rid of any smells. And just a little bit of this unintentional tractor. Just put a little bit of that in the water. Just gets rid of any human smells that there might be about. And then just add a little bit of water to the ground bait and mix it in. I'm not mixing a lot up. I really only intend to put some in at the beginning. 
I'm going to cap it in, I'm not going to throw it in. Just keep it on the dry side. Get in there. I don't want it wet, I just want it sort of dampified. That's coming now. That's coming to a nice texture. Right, and then what? Just a fraction more. Just to make sure the ground bait's dead right. Wipe the bottom of the bowl out. I just run it through the sieve. That just gets rid of any lumps. There we go. It makes it nice and fluffy. Do that. Sieve it. It's nice to leave a few crumbs on the side the bank because there's always plenty of robins and blackbirds about. If it had been a little bit cold I'd expect we'd have had robins here already. That's one of the nice things about fishing is that you get plenty of wildlife and the colder it gets the sort of the braver the birds seem to get. Another thing I'm just going to put a little bit of grilled hemp in, just a little bit. That just because I am going to put some hemp in, just enough to just flavour it a little bit, just put that in and rub that through. You can see everything's rubbed through a sieve, and then just mix it in, and that's a lovely fluffy texture. And you can always tell if ground bait's mixed up right. You should be able to squeeze it into a nice ball, and then nice and hard, and then just rub it, and if it all comes out fluffy again, see how it's all gone back to how it was, you know the ground bait's mixed up just right. So that ground bait's nice. So that's all mixed up. Let's tidy myself up a little bit. Put that on there. Put that behind there. Right. It actually looks like we're getting ready to start fishing. Fish down now. I'll net this one. Have a roach. About two ounces. Well, I actually started off fishing a bread punch at six metres. And uh, weren't really catching a great deal. I've gone on to squat because my runner told me Dickie Carl was catching on it. And it seems to have worked really well. Since then, I haven't actually stopped catching. I've not needed to change over lines. Just stuck at six metres. It is actually quite easy fishing. You don't have to lay it out too far on the water. It's, uh, just drop it in really, let the flow take it. And feed some squat. What's, what's happened to me today is I, I've been catching fish down on the bottom, but all I've been catching is little fish. So what I've done, I've strung my rig out and come up in the water, and I've started to get the odd better fish. But they don't seem to be able to get their heads down. I can't, when I say that, I can't pin them down in one place. But I think that'll come later. That there's not enough fish there at the minute to get them into a frenzy. Which what happens is, your squats go through the water and there's loads of fish competing for your bait. 
and it, that way is they have your bait a bit more and um, you catch more fish, obviously. This rig here is my bulk rig, which what happens here is the main bulk there, as you can see, settles, and these three little number 13 shots sink underneath it. This one here, which is strung out, which is, uh, we have got no bulk, the shots sink slower, and the fish watch it go down, and then they get inquisitive and they'll eat it when it settles, hopefully. Yeah, it's got a bit hard out there now. Started up all right on the punch. Had a pound or so in the first half there. But over the last, what, three quarters of an hour, I've had about six fish. Fishing seven metres on punch at the moment. And it's gone very, very iffy. Gone out to 11 up the shelf on squat and nicked three fish. And it just died as well. And I carry on feeding the 11 and have another little dabble out there shortly. The only thing I can make out from it, I'll bump two roach, one after the other. And since then, it's very hard to get a bite. I've deepened up, nicked a few gudgeon. But the roach have done a vanishing act. Hopefully, they'll come back onto the feed shortly. They're nice stamped little roach. You're not going to get a big weight, but you're going to get a few of them. Oop, I'll have to use a disgorger on that one. Just, just slightly in its mouth, so if I just... so you don't hurt it. That's it, lovely. Using these little barbie silks, it comes out nice and easy and it doesn't never damage the fish at all, which is what we want to make sure, because they're our, our fish of the future. There's definitely a nice lot of fish here. It's amazing how many bites I've had already. When you're squat fishing, this is the main thing to remember. As you see, I'm feeding regularly. I'm not feeding a great deal. I'm probably feeding a dozen squat a time. And, and that's normally about what you want to feed, a dozen to squats. And you only feed more, you'll find if the fish really start to come, you really start to get a lot of bites. Right, this is a nice swim. It's a um, nice bush hanging over on the far side, which I've been uh, baiting up with bronze red maggot and caster, which I'm hopefully going to get some chub there, out there a little bit later on. At the moment, I'm fishing about six, seven metres, um, fishing the squat. It's pretty slow to start the first half an hour. Um, I've got a dozen or so average roach now. But the fish are not staying with the bait, so it's just a case of... Uh, when they turn up, get out as many as you can. At the moment, I'm fishing bulk down. Um, it's all the shots, so I'm fishing. The bait's getting down to the bottom as quick as possible. Uh, they're not up in the water at all. I was fishing along the bottom at first. Uh, I was picking up too many small gudgeon, so I'm fishing about four inches off now. Hopefully, pick up the better stamp roach. Nick. Not a lot, Al. It's right hard. Uh, what are they doing up there? Uh, bunnies on uh, squat, right? Yeah. They're letting it go, plenty of them, right? Yeah. Really got to give it them. Loads of bait. they are running out of time. Really? Yeah. Just give it them. Because there's millions of fish out there. Oh, I'll try that. Honestly, yeah. you... What, emping it? Pumping emping? They're not feeding it. They stop feeding, they're blowing it out. Yeah? Just go for it. Okay. Yeah. It was about an hour ago, wasn't it? Really, it's well worth it, I'm telling you. I'm not about it. Don't listen to anyone else. I'll try it. I'll try it now. Get it wrong, it's down to me. 
Maybe fish the bottom. Yeah. Try that two inches. Let's see if we can. So it's gone a bit quite close in there. Anything? No, not yet. Are you right over? No, I'll gradually go across. Let's, let's, no, let's, no, let's, away, nah, that's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll give it a go. Line yourself. Yeah. I had a couple on it earlier. Yeah. I just seem to be going backwards and forwards, like, you know. Right, in your way, am I? No, yeah. Oh, nice one. Ah! Oh, boy, you can't do that, mate. Nah. Come on, Should be a few more out there. All right, I'll leave you alone anyway, all right? All right, well, fair Four pounds, seven ounces. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well done. More than I thought. There's better quality of fish being caught down here than at the other end. They're all very small bits. Whoa, that's good weight there, Tony. Oh, well done. I reckon about seven pounds, eh? <laughs> uh, no, I'm afraid that's orbital. You've got the wrong team, eh? That nine, nine pounds. Six ounces. Well done, Tony. Well done. Good, good weight today, that. It's got to be the match winner today. You reckon? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Like, uh... I don't don't think that'll be beat. How much you have there? As much as that. Yeah, good angle, this guy. Fifteen. No, no, I don't think so. There we go. I've got a big enough net. Oh, Ooh, not much in it, though. Three pound. Like my front room, nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> weighing that ticket and all. Yep. All count. Yep, really. That's a little bonus fish. Okay. Yes, Alright, second Robo's angler. Three pounds. That's it. 
No. Two. Two twelve. Two pound twelve ounces. Five right, one. Well done. Done is two steam in front. Three fifteen. Fair enough. No. Three pound fifteen ounces. Well done, Dickie. My board's getting extremely wet. Yeah, Quality fish. fish. You can't kill them together, can you, class? Danny Cruz has got better ones than that. Mind you, he's not got one as big as that. Well done, Paul. Well, there's no little baby there, is there? Five pound, yeah, must be. Five, no, I've got five of them. Four. Four. Five pound, yeah, must be. Five pound, yeah, must be. Five pound, yeah, must be. Four. Four and eleven. Yeah, four pound, eleven ounces. Yep. Well done, Paul. Well done. Second place. Done well. What weight, yeah? Nine pound, Tony Ram. Oh, really? oh four, four eleven. eleven. I think we might have done you today, Dan. Yeah. Go on, Brian. Put under that. Four pound, three ounces. Well done, Danny. Well done, Danny. You can be very close today. There's a lot more fish in there. I never had a fish. I went, yeah, I went, I went an hour without a fish. fish there. Four pounds, seven ounces. Huh? Seven. And I, I went an hour and I, could, I never had a fish. And I was bagging. Oh, it's been very close here. What sort of weight you got, John? Five pounds, six without it. <coughs> seven pounds, by no Move along, please. Oh, about six pounds, I think. Mean. Yeah, six pounds. Well done, John. Good weight. I'll just get through this lot. You certainly may. Oh, looking bad for all but a wheel. No, four, no. Three, four, five. Four, five. Four, five. Four pound five ounces. Well done, Paul. Well done, Paul. Right, does the winner get 16 yeah, points 16. down to one or? 16. Yeah, do it back in the pub. Right, yeah. getting well, soaked. Do it now. <laughs> right, put it quiet, please. Results today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I think it's been a very enjoyable day. I think most anglers have enjoyed it. The weather held up for us quite well. What I'll do is I'll do the top seven in reverse order on the day. Uh, seventh, seventh today was Dicky Carl. With three pound fifteen. Sixth today was myself with four pound three. Fifth today was Paul Medcraft with four pound five. Come on, lads. Fourth today was Pete Jordan. Four pound seven. Yeah, I'll get to that. There was a joint fourth today, so uh, Roger Pearson, uh, Sparrow, sorry. Was uh, with also a four pound seven. Yeah, third of the day, Paul Grovner. Grovner, was it Grovner? Yeah, four pound eleven. Second of the day, John Young. With six pound dead. And the winner, and I must say, he was from Gears Orbital, was Tony Van Goolen with nine pound six. Well done, Tony. Right. Who come last? What I'm going to do now is I'll do. Who come last? Uh, come last. Come on. Who was last? Uh, well, Gary Morgan. Yay! I'll do the payouts in reverse order. 
Uh, there was joint. There was a joint fall today. Joint fall today was Pete Jordan and Roger Sparrow. Uh, I think Pete have split that with him, but well done. Ten pound each. Third today on his own was Paul Grosvenor. Well, I can't get it. And 30 pound, well done, Paul. <laughs> Second today from Bethnal Green was John Young. Well done, John. 70 pound, well done, John. And the winner today with nine pound six at 120 pounds was Tony Van Gogh. Well done, Tony. Right. Let's have the team result. Yeah. Now then, you ready for this? <laughs> I don't think you want to do it, but anyway, I shall do it. Gears Orbital, on the day, 61 points. Mm. Bethnal Green, 77 points. Yeah! Right, how many of our men are missing? Oh, One, two... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? He went, go, all right, Dick, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah Brian, right. come, come and sit round here a bit more so we can... That's Paul. Paul, Paul, so that we can, we can start discussing what we're going to do. Get a bit nearer in. Good is, Paul. Nobody knows why. Right. Like, all his family has got nicknames. And no-one knows why they've got them. That's it. Sit your bum down there. So we, we, we've definitely got to make sure we get someone. I've just, spoken, I've just spoken to Brian's missus there. She said he didn't come home until right late last night from work. And then at that time he said he didn't know whether he was going to be able to make it today or not. But he's left. He's already gone this morning. What? Well, on his way now? So, so this is it. So I don't know whether he's... He's left and gone to work again. I'm not going to be a gentleman away, Or whether he's left and he's coming. I mean, I still think I still think we can beat them a man short because they are bloody useless at Orbital. So um, we was a man yeah. short again, that time. We was a man short. Every single one of us today has got to set up a stick, and that is that's. You know what I'm just saying? Every one of us has got to set up a stick, because I tell you what, if anyone fished a stick yesterday, down there, right, and fished it properly, they'd have slaughtered it. And I'm telling you, they'd have slaughtered it. They're trying to fish, right, bottom end only, some of them. Bottom end only, it flow like that, right in front of them. And they were getting bites right into their peg and missed them, because it was like that, stretching their pole out, running out of line. If they'd have set up a stick yesterday, I'll tell you, the only person that done well uh, that they didn't like yesterday was what's called done the article the other. What's his name? Yeah, Tony Yeah. And the only he, he packed up the after about having about 35 fish and he set up a stick. The only thing about his stick was it was that big. <laughs> All you need is like six number four stick. Be perfect. Where you can run it down your peg. And I'll tell you. And all you gotta do is they will catch him where Brian where Brian's sitting. Huh? I'm catching where Brian was sitting. Just, 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 oh, yeah. Feeding him on Big Maggot. Huh? Yeah, but it was flowing too hard for a whip yesterday. Tone. On a whip, it was flowing too hard. I mean, the only way to do it yesterday was fish like... If you fish six metres to hand yesterday, right, six metres to hand yesterday, your wind was slaughtering you. Well, I was on a stick, you'd have better presenta uh, presentation. OK, right, uh, today... You drew last week, Pete, so today yeah. we'll have uh, Chris drawing. If you'd like to draw odds and even, let me know what you got, please. Let's hope so. Yeah, got to be, isn't it? Draw up, you know, Even. Right, gears all, all, all even. 
and what about our odds? As we, yeah. if you want to open your envelope up, and we do it in turn. Go on, let Chris go first, because you might get muddled up. <laughs> as you, as yeah, as you pull them out, Chris, uh, let me know what's what, what numbers are what, and I'll, I'll write down the team as they go. You ready? First peg is number two, and the first peg on number two will be Gary Morgan. Yeah. We'll just give me the peg number, that's all. Number eight. Number eight, Gary Morgan. Morgan. That's, 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 what, that's what I'm going to do. And just going all the down oh, yeah, right. so, yeah. Gary Morgan. There, right, next one is myself. 12. Number 12. Peg yep. Peg 10. 10 is Chris. Oh, 16. Who's, who's next? <laughs> I've been everywhere. No, two away, two away. Who's next? 16, oh, 16, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh
Right, today I'm gonna I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna probably put two cups of ground bait in I am and a couple of three cups of hemp. Because to be quite honest, I think that you're you are looking for a reasonable weight of fish today. You're probably looking for around about eight to ten pounds, so it don't hurt to put a little bit of feed in. A nice little a nice bit of ground bait, two cups of ground bait. and probably three cups of imp. That's what I'm gonna give it today. Just to put a little few squats in there. The ground bait I'm using today is Nature with a bit of special in it. And I've just mixed a little bit of grilled imp in it. It's not very deep, it's about five foot deep, but and the chew is a reasonably heavy ground bait, but this does intend to stop and start, flow one minute and not the next. So I want a ground bait that I can sort of do what I like with. I can I can make it a bit heavier, or I can make it a little bit lighter, and I find that this ground bait very good for that. Another one for me. Uh kind of slow. Catching a few. Hey? Catching the odd ones, like, it's going a bit not quick or anything, but getting your fish. How many fish are you uh, 17 there. Well, that's a bit slow. Yeah. Got 30s and 40s up the other end, but you're mainly all small. Just catching well. Two pegs up. Uh, How are they fishing that? Roach, each coming time. They're better quality than they're catching up the other end. Are they? Yeah, very small. They're not all like that, but. Yeah, no, very small fish up the other end. John on the end peg had 28 fish, but no, very, very small on the punch. I told him what you said about the pinky. You yeah. put the pinky on and straight away caught the fish about twice the size. Then had a pike come up in his swim, which didn't please him very much. Yeah, the water's slowing down a bit now. Should get a few bites now and again. Okay, at the moment I'm catching on uh, fluoro pinky over squat. The punch line didn't really hold very long. But quite a few good fish, up to three, maybe four ounce roach. Um, one or two smaller ones in between. Basically just trying to hold it back at the moment. The fish seem to be having it on that. The um, trouble is that little one. The trouble at the moment is the weather's not particularly good, but right you are having a go. That's more or less the sort of sort of fish I've been catching. At the moment, I would think I'm probably on uh, 
three to four pound of fish, I would say. Which, if that carries on by the end of the match, I should be hopefully into double figures. God, it's proxy weather today. Makes us fishermen must be mad coming out in this. It shouldn't affect the fishing too much here, though, because um, being a drain, it shouldn't flood too much. So obviously, we're still catching fish right through the section. Um, I can't explain it today because the, the flow's going the other way today. Yesterday it was going right to left and now it's going left to right. They've obviously opened up um, a pump house of some sort, what's making the flow do some funny things. But the fishing's still good. This is the main thing. We're just getting a bit wet. And any luck if I keep feeding, the, the fish will come back because obviously I've lost the shoal. Yeah, it's lucky we're not fishing real long poles, I suppose, as well. Um, what we're fishing about eight, nine metres, which is comfortable, really. If it was on long poles with a bank behind us, it'll make it awkward. Yeah, it's... I say, I think with today as well, it, it, as you say, it's, there's a lot of fish in the two and three ounce mark. So if we can get him in the quicker, he's going to probably... Yeah. Here we go, another one. Nice fish here. A little smile for the camera. Oh, a little skimmer. Makes a change from roach. Wouldn't mind a few of their big brothers. About two pound, a, two pound each. Well, I must have about three pound of fish now. That rate, I might be in double figures at the end, hopefully. If all the fish have come to a fluorescent pinky, feeding, feeding a 20, 20 or so squats every cast. Oh, missed that one. I'm gradually sinking into the uh, sinking into the silt. This wind is the uh, problem. It's not the rain, really. It's the wind. I think the, the water's slowing down a bit now. It's a lovely venue, though. A lovely venue. I have to start coming here a few times. The water's decided to move back the other way. While it was moving with the wind, it's not too bad, but against the wind, you've got this line going one way, your float going another way. The float's holding back when it should be running through, but it's all, all fun. Other than that, you're only sitting at home looking at the wife. That's the second one I've dropped in. Probably got as many fish now as Dickie, but I think I've got slightly smaller fish. Feeding little balls of dry crumb, hard. We're squatting and fishing pinky on the up, mainly reds. Well, well I started well. I've had uh, well over 80 fish now, but uh, the flow's now changed, going the opposite way. And uh, although I'm still catching fish, the bite rate has slowed down. Plus, all that small, John. Majority of them are small, but yeah. But uh, trouble is, my hands are so cold now. <laughs> I'm having trouble putting bait on. Everybody's got that problem today. It's rain and wind. Yeah, we well, could have chosen a better day, but there's plenty of fish in this uh, river. Oh, it's solid fish, but some of these yeah. small ones are scared it's just... about the fish. So I, I'm sure there's a few down there that would prepare to take the M, but uh, and it's so so cold, I just can't get it on the hook. <laughs> yeah. oh, 
There you go. Another small one. It's my speciality. Same problem I had last week. Plenty of fish. Do like these little fish. All tiny. Right, I'm going to leave you to it for the last bit of the match. Oh, there goes another one. Perhaps they're coming back. Yeah. Well, I say, a lot of people are caught lots of fish, but like you. It's a lot, a lot of generally fish. small, yeah. Mm. No, people with 50, 60, 70 feet, so I would think 45 pounds a bit weight today. How's it going, Paul? Yeah, quite well. Yeah? Yeah, since, since the flow started, it started picking up to like plenty of bites and fish. Yeah. It's only in sort of like the last couple of minutes. What I've... sort of size fish you get? Them little tiny things or? Yeah, I've had the one or two sort of like better ones. Yeah. I do want to catch in lots of fish, but very, very small a lot. Like, solid with little fish, but... No, how you been catching them? Well, I well started off probably like everyone else on the, on the punch. Yeah. And I started off about five to hand, because it wasn't moving at all. Uh, so I started off on that. I couldn't really catch on the punch. I don't know why. I thought it would have gone, really. I couldn't catch on the punch, so I gave that up as a bad idea. Uh, went over onto long pole. Still, still, I couldn't get a bite at all. Um, uh, then I started picking up like little fish. Then uh, that dried out. So what I ended up doing was going on the waggler, yeah. on, on the pinky. And uh, I started picking up them quite regular. Yeah, it's wind. I mean, it's hard work on long pole, isn't it? It's, it's terrible, isn't it? I haven't fished in conditions like this for a long, long time. <laughs> We get plenty of bites, but it's so there's a lot of small fish out there. It's yeah, if, if everyone, always if everyone is saying that one or two pegs where they've had slightly better fish, two or three ounces, you have one, five, six ounces, but a lot of them are very, very small, you know, less than an ounce. Yeah. Places. It's done. So I was getting quite a chuck now for some reason. It? It's just dried up a little bit. I think it's because it's, uh, it's catching a bit more pace, this, this water at the moment. I've had, I've had a sort of a funny day today. I, I'm not sure how I'm doing in the match. I probably, I'm catching like this all the time. The fish are a bit small though, so it's hard to assess what I've got. I've been catching steady. Look at the size of them, not very big. I'm probably knocking on for five or six pound, hopefully. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Um, I've gone on now, it's started to run, so the last sort of hour, since it's been running reasonably hard, I've, put a, I've got a gram rig on now, but I can't really, to be honest, make out whether it was a lot better than the lighter one. I was running the lighter one through and still catching roughly the same rate. But I've just not been able to sort the bigger fish out. Um, normally when you fish squats, you put a fluorescent pinky on the hook, you normally get the bigger fish, but I found it to be a little bit slower on the fluorescent pinky, and I've all and and not caught as big a fish. I've caught more smaller fish, so um, very hard to sort out what's been the best method today. I've just stuck really to squat most of the time. But as you say, I'm getting a fish a chuck, but that's a small. This one, what's this one going to be? It's probably a little bit bigger. That's, that's as big as I've been catching, and that's about an ounce. Um, it's nice to be catching regular. I must say I'm sitting here enjoying it. I'm catching two or three fish sometimes on the same squat, which is, um, oh, look at that. That's the first time that's happened today. I've gone out there and just caught a little bit of rubbish on the, look at that, and it's on the length on the up length, so let's go out. Stack all my fingers and everything. But I've had, I've had a good day in all. I've kept my bait reasonably dry for keep taking small amounts out of the box. And it has, it's been an enjoyable day. It's, it, it's... <coughs> Come on, Gary, get that line out of the water. You, well, have you beat me? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> right, let's announce the results, shall we? In today's match, first overall, 
was Danny Cruz with six pounds, four ounces. Well done, Danny. Danny wins 120 pounds. Well done, Danny. Now he's got to buy a round. <laughs> <laughs> right, second overall was Gary Cruz with 15... Yeah, hang on, five pounds, 13 <laughs> ounces, eight drams. Well done, Gary. You win 70 pounds. Well done, mate. <laughs> right, third overall was Jeff Pearson. Five pounds, six ounces, eight drams. Thirty pounds. Well done. <laughs> and fourth overall today was Dickie. Yeah. Thank you. Got well him mate. Them old four Twenty pounds. <laughs> Five pounds, four ounces, eight drams. <laughs> Right, uh, Shimano have kindly donated more than £500 worth of prizes to the overall points winners of both teams. So for Gears team, Tony Ramgulan with 27 points wins a Shimano 13 foot die flash right. natural. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Second in the Gears team is Danny Cruz with 26 points and he wins an aero match reel. Yeah. Well done, Danny. Well done, Danny. For the Bethnal Green Robos, Paul Grosvenor, Grosvenor, 23 points, a 13 foot die flash match well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> and with 22 points in the Bethnal Green team is Sticky Car. You win the real. Well done, mate. And now for the important news. The first leg, which was at Tuvis Mill on the Grand Union Canal. Gears Orbital got 61 points and Bethnal Green Robos got 77 points. Whee! So the Robos won the first leg. Now today at the coal yard on the Old River Neen here in March, and this is the important news, Gears got 77 points, Whee! Bethnal Green 59 points. Whee! Which meant overall Bethnal Green Robos got 136, and Gears Orbital, 138! Yeah! Well done, boys. Well done.